Greetings, friends. Welcome back to the COVID-19 pandemic briefing brought to you by Pirate Biotechnology Morro Bay High School. We're on lesson seven here in which we're studying the pathophysiology of COVID-9. So let's break, we've looked at this word a couple times, but let's break it down here. Pathophysiology. Patho refers to pathogen, which is something that causes disease. And disease is whenever your body's not working properly. Physiology means how, how an organism works, like how the biochemistry of the organism works. So when we're talking about pathophysiology, we're studying about how the disease happens. That's what we're looking at right now. How does COVID-19 happen? So COVID-19 is the latest is iteration of SARS, which stands for Sudden Acute Respiratory Syndrome. So the key word there is respiratory. So we studied last time about what respiration is. So we use this model right here and the real key um, part of the pathophysiology of COVID-19 is this area right here. This area of exchange in the lungs where carbon dioxide is taken away from red blood cells and oxygen is added to the red blood cells. And that happens inside of the lungs. So sudden acute respiratory syndrome has symptoms and three of the most um, prevalent symptoms are cough, fever, and difficulty breathing. So we're going to learn why these three symptoms happen. So coughing is one of the symptoms and here's a image of somebody coughing right here and you can see all these particles right here, all these little droplets. See these tiny little droplets? And this this looks all like fake and extreme, but I was sitting at the dinner table two nights ago and the sun was coming through the window in just such a way that it was on my son's face like this. And he coughed and I, all these nasty particles came out. And it happens every time somebody coughs, but it's just that I could see it because of the light. So when somebody coughs or sneezes, or even when they talk, all these particles, these little water droplets are coming out. So if those water droplets contain uh, coronavirus, then um, somebody else can breathe that in and that those coronavirus particles can end up in their lungs where the infection happens. So here's a model of lungs. This is an air pipe right here. And the air pipe splits into all these branches. And those branches terminate in these clustered grape looking balls. And those are called alveoli, of course. So here's a close up model of those alveoli with a cross section so you can see inside of it. So this is made up of one kind of tissue and then this is space inside. And then you can see that the alveoli are intimately um, connected with capillaries, which are little tiny blood vessels that are permeable. So here's another, here's a zoom in of one alveolus. So these are alveoli, this is one of them an alveolus and here's its associated capillary right here and this is the red blood cells in there so when the red blood cells are oxygenated we model them red and when they're deoxygenated we model them blue so probably maybe you could look at this model and you could determine which direction the blood is flowing is it flowing this direction or is it flowing this direction? Go ahead and push pause, see if you can suss it out. That's right. Well, I guess it kind of gave way because there are these arrows up here. But yeah, it must be flowing this way because the blood comes to the lungs deoxygenated. It dumps its carbon dioxide into this airspace inside of this alveolus. 
and it picks the blood, picks up oxygen from this airspace, and in that, um, in so doing, the blood becomes oxygenated. So let's look at this a little bit closer now, this alveolus. So here's another model of an alveolus right here. Let me move this away. Uh, there's cells on the inside of the alveolus. You can see them right here. They modeled this kind of this cell right here, and they modeled this cell right here. And these cells are called pneumocytes. Pneumo um, a, refers to pneumatic or of air, and that's the, the medical term for lungs. So pneumo and site means cell. So pneumocyte means lung cell. And there's two kinds of uh, lung cells lining the interior of the alveolus. There's type two pneumocytes and there's type one pneumocytes. And if you look at where the carbon dioxide and the oxygen are crossing, which type of cells are they crossing through? Which type of cells are the carbon dioxide and oxygen passing through? That's right. The carbon dioxide and the oxygen are passing through the type 1 pneumocytes, not the type 2 pneumocytes. So we can infer from that that type 1 pneumocytes are the place where the gas exchange happens. That's the place where the carbon dioxide and the oxygen pass from the capillary into or out of the airspace in the center of the alveolus. So let's look at this alveolus in a more detailed model. Okay, so here's this alveolus over here. This center part is full of air. This is made of cells, and here's the associated capillaries. So we're going to zoom in on this little spot right here, which contains the wall of the alveolus and a capillary. So here's the wall of the alveolus right here. Here's the airspace on the inside of the alveolus. And here's the wall of the capillary, which you can see is made out of cells. And here's the lumen or the space inside of the capillary, which is full of blood cells. So here's what I want to point out. I want to point out that the wall of the alveolus is made up of these two types of pneumocytes, type 2 pneumocytes and type 1 pneumocytes. The type 1 pneumocytes you can see are really flattened out and thin. And that's so that there's not much uh, cytoplasm that the gas has to diffuse through, the carbon dioxide gas or the oxygen gas. So it can easily pass through that, but air can't get through there. You don't want air getting into your blood. So air can't get through the cell, but um oxygen in the air and carbon dioxide in the air can get through the cells the other type of cell is called this type 2 pneumocyte and the type 2 pneumocyte is not involved in gas exchange the type 2 pneumocyte is involved in the secretion of surfactant and surfactant is a fancy way of saying soap and you're like whoa why would your why would your lung cells want to secrete soap? And the reason they want to secrete soap or surfactant is to break the water tension. That so see this this cell and this cell. This is air right here, but the entire surface of these cells is coated in water. If it was direct, if these cells were directly exposed to air, they would shrivel up and die. So there's a thin layer of water in here. But um, if you kind of like think of a thin layer of water, 
look over here to the left if you uh think of a thin layer of water all in here you guys know that one thing water is really good at doing is sticking to other water molecules and if those water molecules stick to each other too hardcore it can cause this alveolus to collapse so in order to prevent that from happening these two type 2 pneumocytes secrete a surfactant which reduces the surface tension inside of this water lining the inside of this and it keeps the alveolus from collapsing. That's going to be important to our pathophysiology here. Okay, so here we are with a coronavirus with its spike proteins on the outside and with its RNA on the inside. And here we are down here with one of those type 2 pneumocyte cells. It turns out that the coronavirus uses the type 2 pneumocytes as its um, reproduction factory. So it invades these type 2 pneumocytes because its spike protein has electrical properties which match the electrical properties of this ACE2 receptor in the membrane of this pneumocyte cell. And that docking occurs. And then that signals this type 2 pneumocyte cell. So that's what we're modeling right here, type 2 pneumocyte cell. That signals it to undergo receptor-mediated endocytosis, which means bringing something into the cell with the help of a receptor. Which receptor? This ACE2 receptor. ACE2 receptor in what kind of cell? A type 2 pneumocyte cell which is one of the two types of cells that lines the interior of the alveolus. I know this is a lot of words, and I recommend what you guys do is write these words down and write down definitions for them because we're starting to pile up a lot of words, and uh, it's important that you nail your vocabulary down so we can move forward. So anyway, that viral particle gets in there, and then what happens? It hacks cells to do this. It injects its RNA into the cell. And then that RNA, two things happen to it. One of which is translation at a ribosome. And viral proteins are produced. So the spike protein, and I think there's nine other proteins, 11 other proteins. So some of those proteins can um, glom together and form an enzyme called a replication complex. And that replication complex, which is not native to our cells, that replication complex can take this viral RNA and replicate it. And what's replicate mean? That's right. It means make a bunch of copies of it. So here we are with a whole bunch of copies of viral RNA. If you take those copies of viral RNA and you take all these viral proteins and you take a phospholipid bilayer that's produced by the endoplasmic reticulum, those things will self-assemble with the help of the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus in order to make new viral particles. So those viral particles will go on to cause damage to the cell. And what kind of cell is it we're talking about? I can't even remember. Oh yeah, we're talking about a type 2 pneumocyte. Where's type 2 pneumocytes? Oh yeah, they're inside the alveolus and alveoli are inside of your lungs. So here we are with this type 2 pneumocyte bursting forth with viral particles. Let's see what happens next. So here's this type 2 pneumocyte, type 1 pneumocyte, type 2 pneumocyte, type 2 pneumocyte, type 1 pneumocyte. Here's this type 2 pneumocyte. I'm showing it bursting forth with these viral particles. And yeah, that seems kind of bad, but I think what you guys might be kind of surprised to learn is that 
that's not what necessarily causes the symptoms of this disease, the coughing and the, uh, the fever and the difficulty breathing. This alone isn't going to do this. Here's how the disease really starts to take a turn for the worse. When these type 2 pneumocytes get damaged, what they do oops, is they release molecules that we'll learn about next time that cause inflammation. Inflammation. What word does inflammation have in it? Oh, yeah. It's got flame in it. So to inflame means kind of to set on fire. So this process does not set your cells on fire literally, but it does set them on fire figuratively. What it does is it causes your cells to freak out, which is going to be the subject of our next lecture. Have a great day. Wednesday, Pirate Biotech students, and I'll see you next time.